Hey everyone, my name is Venerin, and in this video we are going to see how you can deploy your fine-tuned PEFT model to production. Here we are going to have a look at how you can get the model from the previous video, how you can merge it with the base model, and then we are going to upload the model to a Face Hub repository. From there, we are going to create a simple REST API, and along with Docker, we are going to deploy the model to production. We are going to have a look at how you can query your REST API and what you need in order to get your API running. Let's get started. If you want to follow along, there is a complete text tutorial that is available for ML Expert Pro subscribers, and you can find it within the bootcamp section of the web page within Deploy Custom LM to Production. I'm going to link this down into the description of this video. So please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro. Thank you. I have a Google Cloud notebook that is already running, and this is on a T4 GPU from the Google Cloud. And in here, you can see that I have mostly Torch, Transformers, Accelerate, Peft, and VLLM. So these are pretty much all of the dependencies that you're going to need. And I have a couple of imports. And most importantly, I'm loading the model from the local files. This is essentially the model that we've had uh, in the previous video. And here you can see that this is essentially the model, the adapter config, the adapter itself. So this one is roughly, let's see how many megabytes, about 800 megabytes. And we have the token maps, the tokenizer itself, etc. So in order to load the model, you need the base model. Then I'm going to load the tokenizer from my directory right here. And one important thing about this tokenizer is that I don't want this tokenizer to add the end of a sequence character or a token in an automatic mode. So uh, this was essentially the reason why in the previous video we've seen that the model was actually repeating the predictions. So if you want to fix that, uh, you need to add this right here. And then I'm loading the base model into a Torch 416 format. And this is going to be putting the model on a GPU. And then I'm essentially doing the same thing that we did before. I'm resizing the token embeddings through the model. So this will uh, give us the new vocabulary size that is going to be representative of this token embeddings for the model. And then I'm loading the base model right here. On top of it, I'm loading the adapter. And if we load this, yeah, I would probably need first to do the imports and then here. And then I'm essentially merging the adapter or the PEFT adapter with the model itself. So this merge and unload is going to essentially give us a large model that is going to be a representative of the base tiny llama model. On top of it, we are going to essentially apply our tokenizer. So after that, uh, and this should take some time right here, I'm going to try out a simple prompt. So this was one of the sample uh, documents or examples from the validation set for our data set. Uh, it says Bitcoin price predictions as BTC breaks through $27,000, etc. And some text. And then I'm going to get a prediction out of that. So this is going to be the prompt. And it's going to be using the same format that we've used before. And here I'm going to create the encoding for that. And you can see uh, that I'm actually using the model device right here, again, with the prompt. And then I'm using the model generate on the encoding. And I want at most 16 tokens. So let's see what is the encoding of this. So this is essentially the tokenizer decode of the output. And you can see that the actual prediction is going to be a subject of Bitcoin which is essentially uh, what I should also predict this to be the subject. And then the sentiment is positive since uh, this is uh, news about breaking through some uh, particular price point. So this looks to be uh, working all right. And again, you can use a pipeline from the Transformers library in which you can say that you don't want to, this to return the full text from the prediction and uh, I'm going to create this pipeline using the model, the tokenizer, and I'm going to say that I want this to be a task for text generation. And you can see that the model prediction time on this T4 GPU is quite fast, uh, under 500 milliseconds. 
since we are just outputting a subject and a sentiment on two new lines. And in order to run this through the Hugging Face Hub, you essentially need to select and what your um, essentially you have to sign in your notebook, and uh, you can do that with, for example, from Hugging Face Hub import notebook login. And after that, you need to essentially do the notebook login. Yeah, you also you need to press right here. You need to get your token and then you're going to be able to log in within this uh, notebook in order to do the next step, which is going to be essentially to push the model and then the tokenizer to a repository under your account. So uh, in this case, I've already uploaded the model to uh, my essentially Hugging Face Hub. And this is the model. I've added a small readme where you can essentially try the model on your own. And uh, you can see right here that we have the base model itself. This is the model that is merged with the adapter. So essentially, you don't need the packed library in order to load this model. You just need to use this and I'll show you how in a minute. And then we have a config file, a readme file, essentially everything that you need in order to use this model. And I've also included an example right here how you can load the model along with the prompt format, etc. But we're going to go through this right now. So in order to load the model from the hub, uh, I'm going to point the tokenizer path and the model path to my repository. And since we've already loaded the tokenizer with no, without adding the end of sequence token, this is going to be used within the automatic configuration. So you don't need to do this when you're actually using your model. And you can see that I'm creating a new pipeline in order to uh, work with the model from the Hugging Face Hub. And this is going to go and download the 2.2 uh, gigabytes yeah, this is essentially the space that you need in order to load the model. Again, this is the original tiny one model. And on top of that, we have the merged adapter that we've trained in the previous video. So in order to get this to work, uh, I'm going to create this pipeline once again. And after the pipeline is complete, I'm going to essentially get the same prompt in order to have a look at what we are going to get. And again, with the Hugging Face model, we are essentially getting the same thing, uh, the subject Bitcoin and then sentiment positive. So uh, another important thing that you can do is to actually use the API inference Hugging Face. So this is going to be essentially getting the inference API that is available from Hugging Face. And since this model is going to be uh, relatively small, at least according to Hugging Face standards, you can do essentially a query against it. And at first, this model is going to be uh, not loaded. So if I do this, uh, you see that uh, we have some estimated time for the model to load. And uh, during this time, I'm going to essentially tell you that you need your Hugging Face token in order to make your request. And uh, after that, this is the URL that you are going to need in order to make the request on its own. And I'm going to use, be using just the requests library and I'm going to create a post request to this URL. And in it, I'm going to paste in a payload, which needs to be in a JSON format. And in our case, this is the format. So uh, you can essentially specify the same parameters that you have within the pipeline, for example. And in our case, I don't want this to return the full text. So I'm going to be passing in an inputs from for that I'm going to pass in the prompt. So this will be essentially the prompt that we have to this model. And then let's see if the model has already loaded. It might be. Yeah. OK, so this is essentially the raw format that you get. And this is the response that you get from this uh, API. So you can see that the model has been loaded on the Hugging Face repository. And then we've seen that the response is pretty much the same that we got from the local model. Now, you've seen that you can use the Hayface Inference API in order to get predictions for your model, but this is not ideal since you have to wait 
for your model to be loaded and then the responses can be a bit slow so if you want to create your model behind or host your model behind an api you have the ability to do so using uh, python and in this case i'm going to show you how you can create a rest api with fast api and then we are going to add a docker file to allow you to essentially host your model whatever you want and we're going to be using the new hugging face docker uh, essentially has spaces in order to load and uh, deploy our model and you can use pretty much any service that is allowing you to use uh, docker files in order to deploy your model so this is the structure of my project which i'm calling swift mind so this is actually uh let's say a very minimal code that you need in order to host your model predictions using fast api and this is essentially the main part of this model you see that we have this app.api or pi file in it i'm going to create a model a tokenizer and i'm going to show you how you uh, those two are implemented and then i'm going to create a pydantic or pedantic uh, base model or model for the request so you see here that we are going to be having a prompt max new tokens and a return full text parameters and essentially the response model is going to be just this prediction and this is the fast api app that i'm going to create i'm going to give it a title a description and then a version i'm going to apply a course middleware and then i'm going to apply all of these rules in order to be able to make requests to this api and then uh, after that i'm going to apply some security headers using this uh, middleware after that i'm going to apply essentially this uh, heartbeat route in order to check whether or not the service is actually running and i'm going to create this post method for the predict function uh, this is going to be returning the response model of prediction and then the request is going to be of the type prediction request which is essentially this pedantic or pedantic uh base model inf um, essentially a uh, data model that we have so again i'm going to be uh, creating this function using a sync function and in our case i'm going to be calling this predict method uh, or function that i'm going to show you how we've implemented in a second and after this prediction is complete i'm going to be returning this uh, response for the prediction with the content and if anything happens i'm going to essentially um, tell that the response didn't succeed i'm going to return a status code of 500 for a server error and i'm going to essentially print out the error that we have so very simple but uh it appears to be working quite all right at least for toy examples uh as one that we are having right here of course in a production setting you might want to have some monitoring etc uh, in order to um work out how you're going to serve your predictions so for the predictor file uh, which is going to be within the swift mind uh directory uh, you can see that i'm using a constant which is pointing essentially to the current model that we are looking at and i'm creating an auto tokenizer and auto model for causal language modeling uh, you see here that they have pretty much the same code that we had in the notebook when we were modeling this model and then for the prediction i'm essentially getting a tokenizer encoding and then uh, using the generate method uh, i'm going to check if the generation actually contains any uh, characters and if that is not the case i'm going to essentially return an empty string after that from the outputs i'm going to get the first prediction since we want just one prediction and again if uh, we are having a look at uh, return full text since i'm not using actually a pipeline right here i'm going to uh, essentially cut out the part that is uh, within the prompt encoding or tokens from the prediction and after that i'm going to decode the response and i want to skip the special tokens i'm going to essentially just strip the response for that so this is going to be the predict function a uh, very simple but know that we are not using the text or a text generation pipeline essentially uh another important thing is the requirements file uh, you see that we have uh the versions of the libraries that we're using the fast api uvcorn for the server pydantic transformers torch and accelerate nothing uh really uh, surprising here and for the docker file this is uh, pretty simple uh, we are going to be using python 3.11 slim as a base uh, docker container or image 
and I'm going to essentially create this directory. I'm going to copy the requirements file to our new work directory. I'm going to install the requirements, create a new user. This is pretty much taken from the hidden face Docker example right here. I'm going to pass in the path to the bin file, uh, to the current local bin file. And then I'm going to be working on this app. Uh, yeah, on this directory right here. I'm going to copy whatever we have from the user to the home.app. And from here, I'm going to essentially start the UVCorn server. I'm going to pass, in, pass it into this port right here. And I'm going to start the app. And within the app, I'm going to take uh, the app file. Within the app file, I'm going to be targeting this variable, which are, we are also calling app. So this is going to be the file app.py uh, and then the app variable right here i'm going to host our swift mind project on a hugging face uh, spaces and uh, here is the new re or relatively new spaces uh, page in which you can essentially create uh, this docker image and uh, from here i'm just creating my new space name and one important thing is to see that this is actually coming with a free cpu so you can use this in order to uh, run your instance this is at least the instance that i'm running with and uh, there are some uh, gpus as well so if you want to have a look at those uh, you can also try them out and uh, you can also choose whether or not your space to be public or private and this is essentially how i'm going to create this space uh, there is also this very nice uh, talker spaces uh, tutorial that i'm going to link down into the description and they're talking about uh, different use cases and one for the NVIDIA spaces. So let's see if I uh, create this. And I want this to be Apache 2. And when you run this, you will be greeted with this. Uh, you essentially need to get the account of this repository. Then you need to create your Docker file. Then you need to commit it. And then uh, essentially your Docker space needs to listen on the port that we the port that we are already uh, specifying thus far. And this is my hugging face space. As you can see, I've uh, uploaded the Docker files, the app.py, the Swift mind, etc. This uh, space is actually public now, so you can try it out on your own. And if you go to the space itself, uh, you see that this is essentially uh, refusal to connect since we don't have anything on the front end of this repository so if you want to have a look at how you can use this uh, you can essentially get this uh, address here and apply dash docs and uh, this is essentially that you are going to get this is the swagger docs for this repository and you can see that we have this make prediction and here you will get the actual schema that you want to try it out and this is the response that we're going to get uh, these are the prediction requests so essentially these are the patterns that we have and uh, let's try it out uh, let's say that i'm passing in the prompt so yeah so i probably need to be passing in uh, something along the lines of this uh, since yeah we are not using the actual api right here so this will be a bit more laborious. Let me do this. And then another new one character. Let's try it out. So it's a very slow response, but as you can see, we are getting the correct response, subject Bitcoin, and then sentiment positive out of our uh, prediction URL. And this is how you can essentially deploy your Docker project within a hugging face space in this video we've seen how you can get your peft fine-tuned model how you can essentially merge it with the base model create a single model from that and upload it to a hugging face repository from there we've seen how you can create a rest api with fast api and how you can wrap everything within a docker file and we've deployed our project to a hugging face space of course, you can use the same setup in order to deploy your model to multiple places that support Docker projects. And we've seen how you can apply a simple request from the Swagger docs in order to get a feel of what your API is going to return. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.